Hey everyone, some big news, Invoke 4.2 is here. That is the Community Edition release of 4.2, as well as the release of control layers in our commercial product. We're excited by these changes, and these set the stage for some exciting updates in the future, where we'll expand additional capabilities for control, as well as artistry directly inside the Invoke tool. But for now, we're going to talk about some of the changes that have been made to the interface, as there are a couple of elements that have moved around. If you're a longtime user, or if you're looking at older videos and trying to acclimate, you'll need to reorient yourself as some of the elements have moved around. We're going to talk about the changes first, and then dive into the additional features that have been added as part of the 4.2 control layers update. The first thing that you'll notice is that on each of the tabs that exist, we have a new toolbar that allows you to switch between a dedicated workspace for that tab and the viewer that allows you to select gallery images, view them, and perform image-specific transformations, as well as preview ongoing generations. You can easily switch between the workspace and the viewer by hitting the Z key or hitting the button in the top right. You'll also notice that the preview toggle as well as the metadata information have been moved to the top left of your viewer. A few other UI updates to note is that the control adapters and IP adapters have moved out of our settings panel and into a new tab that we call control layers. The control layers tab allows you to add all of the control adapters, IP adapters, as well as the initial image for an image to image transformation directly inside of this single tab. The text to image tab has been updated to generation and now includes all core generation capabilities such as text to image and image to image. This is where you'll be creating new images using control inputs as well as the new regional guidance layers that we'll talk about in just a moment. Layers can be added and deleted relatively easily. You can also delete all layers by clicking the delete all button. If we're wanting to run an image to image process similar to how you would operate using the image to image tab of the past, you can simply add a global initial image layer and add that in. Let's take a look at our control layers tab to watch that preview. With the control layers tab, you'll also be given some nice user experience affordances. In this example, we can see that our initial image is kind of getting distorted because our image settings are not aligned with the size of our initial image. We can easily use things like the width to height optimization to update our canvas size and generate the image in the size we intended. This is helpful not just for initial images, but also for control adapters and a number of other areas of the app that will drive structural control of your generation. In addition to the initial image preview, we'll also get a preview of any control adapters that we add to our generation. This allows us to visualize exactly where in the image certain elements are going to go and also allows us to add new regional controls to our generation, which is what we'll talk about next. Our regional guidance layers are a major addition to Invoke's capability set. Whereas in the past, your prompt had a global effect and it was often sometimes difficult to get certain elements to have aesthetic traits or characteristics without sharing those same aesthetic traits to the rest of the image. Regional guidance allows us to very specifically prompt in certain areas of the composition for certain elements. Really the way to think about regional guidance is kind of like influencing where the AI model is focusing its attention for certain elements of your prompt. We're going to talk about how the global prompt and the regional prompt interact, as well as some failure modes or patterns that can cause you to get less than optimal outputs. But for now, we're just going to go ahead and showcase some of the capabilities of the regional guidance. By default, when you add a regional guidance layer, you're adding a positive prompt. You can delete that prompt out and see that we have positive, negative, and image prompts available on our regional guidance. We can also add additional prompts using the layer settings dropdown. We can have a positive, negative, and image prompt all at the same time. We can also have multiple image prompts on any single layer. This is fully compatible with the new style method and composition method. And using these in conjunction with a positive prompt really allow for a lot of control over the visual aesthetic of what we're generating. I'll go ahead and change this to a style only, bring that down to a 0.5, and then use this helmet that I've generated in the past. Now that I've got my regional guidance layer configured, I can move to the canvas and begin brushing where I want that to 
apply. You have a lot of the same controls as you would expect on the canvas. You have a brush, an eraser for your regional masks. You'll also have a rectangle, which allows you to mask certain regions using a rectangle. You can move these layers around if you need to adjust them based on a new image. And all of the hotkeys you've come to love are available for you to use. I'll go ahead and erase some of the area of that rectangle that I don't want. Now, it's worth noting that while I'm drawing very specific areas of this region, the way that this process works is going to not be as precise and specific as I'm applying here. This is for a number of reasons. First, all of these are being compressed to a much smaller size when they're going through the generation process. This is known as the latent space. But additionally, these regions are are influential but not directly controlling the output. In order to make for a more coherent image, the AI model does have some freedom as it's applying these regional guidance layers and it will try to make a globally coherent image based on your global prompt, regardless of what your regional guidance says. So this is where there's gonna be a little bit of trial and error and understanding how an individual image is gonna be interpreted but this is still a really strong way of injecting and controlling certain regions of content. Let's go ahead and add another regional guidance layer and describe our merchant's uh, attire. And then I'll just use a text prompt to describe our backpack here. One thing that I'm gonna call out as we're looking at this growing list of layers are a couple of quality of life features, as well as some important context for how this regional guidance is going to control the generation. First, if you double click any layer, you can collapse it. This just helps you get a little bit of a better visibility if that list is growing pretty long. You can still change your mask preview colors and you can double click to open that back up and review the content. The other thing that we'll call out is that all of these regional guidance layers have this tag of auto negative. This is something that you can control in the settings. Uh, you'll see this auto negative is enabled. By default, when you're selecting a region, we are automatically creating an inverted mask and negatively prompting the opposite of that region. In this case, I'm saying that in this area, we do want the blue futuristic backpack. And in all of the other areas outside of this yellow region, we do not want this. We are negatively prompting for this thing. There may be some situations where we don't necessarily want that negative prompt everywhere else. We're trying to nudge something towards a specific trait or subject, but we don't necessarily want to take that away from everywhere else in the region. There may be, for example, a little bit of conflict here of futuristic elements in each of these that are going to conflict with futuristic elements elsewhere. But as mentioned before, we can easily turn this off if we don't want that type of control applied. Let's go ahead and generate and see what we get. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and take my candy control down just a little bit on the weight and the instep, just so that we have a little bit of freedom to make that uh, soft. We can now see where we got a little bit of our influence from our previous images. We definitely got black and gold scarf here from our image prompts. Maybe wanted to see a little bit more of this helmet in our helmet prompt. So I might go ahead and bump this up and turn this to an IP adapter plus model and regenerate. Great. So we've gotten a lot of the elements that we wanted here. We can compare and contrast. We might like certain elements that one generated over the other, but we can always composite those later. And if we like these and want to make some edits, we can send these to the unified canvas to edit there. Let's go ahead and delete our layers and then switch this image size up a little bit because I'm going to go through and talk about some of the global prompt and regional prompt interactions. We won't use control layers for this because this is purely to help demonstrate where we can run into challenges using regional guidance and how we can overcome some of those challenges. So this is not unsurprising, right? We are commonly experiencing this tendency for the AI models to have adjective bleed. So in this case, this left dog looks kind of like a dog, but he's maybe got cat ears. This cat here is kind of merged in with the dog over on this side. It's hard to tell whose paw is Who's, so this is what happens when we don't have regional control. Now let's go ahead and go to our control layers. We'll add a layer and we'll put cat and we will add a layer and put dog. So we're going to put our dog over here and our cat over here and we'll see what we get with this type of regional control. So now we can see we've got our cat and we've got our dog. There's no bleed of those two concepts and we have separated those 
out. This is what we'll call an aligned global prompt and regional prompt. We have the subjects up in our global prompt that's kind of giving an overall set of understanding for the image. We have regional guidance telling us where each of these things are in this image. And in general, we feel like we have outputs that are aligned with what we were hoping to see. Now let's see what happens when we take dog and cat out of our global prompt. In this case, our global prompt is really not very specific. It doesn't tell us what's inside of the image. And we've activated these regions for dog and cat, but that's not really what the model was generating. It wasn't generating a dog and a cat. It was generating just this general photograph. And so we're optimizing these regions and we're kind of influencing it towards these subjects of dog and cat. But these are more small nudges to help guide the attention. It's not intended to be a solid control of there will be a dog here. Now we can influence this. We can upweight our terms here, but even then we're still not really getting our subjects. And this is because the global prompt has a significant weight on the output. The global prompt really is driving the broad understanding of what this image is going to generate. It's not to say that you can't get regional guidance to work if you're just trying to add elements and compose those in, but typically speaking, the global prompt really needs to align with the type of material you're trying to add. We can try increasing the weight even further, and we notice that we're starting to see a cat here. It's not really the best cat, but it is uh, starting to peek out. So let's take these out and put uh, cat dog back in and show again where this can really help. We'll have a black dog and an orange happy cat. So we've got our orange cat and our black dog. They're both together in our image, and we don't have any of that typical color or adjective bleed between these two subjects. Now, there are some ways to get some control without informing the image using the global prompt. For example, a global image prompt adapter where we use, let's say, our image over here as a composition. And then we will take our left hand side and make this a white goat. And the reason this works is because our composition global IP adapter is really structuring the types of things that are going to be in the image. We're going to have a couple of animals leaning on the ground with this background, and it's going to be a very focused shot. And so this is kind of priming the type of photography that our global prompt is aligning towards and trying to generate. And the black dog and the white goat are effectively painting that guidance on top of something that is already structurally there. If it is on its way to generating something in a certain part of the composition, uh, whether that's a piece of clothing or a subject, regional guidance can really help that attention form around a certain aesthetic or style. Or in this case, our composition only IP adapter is instructing that there are going to be two creatures or animals here. And our regional guidance is just re-instructing which type of animals those are. This can definitely take some finesse and it does take a little bit of trial and error to understand how these things interact, but we recommend playing around with it, learning how these tools interact with one another and really figuring out how you can apply it to your workflow. As demonstrated on this video, it does a really, really great job of helping control certain regions inside of a controlled generation, such as one that uses control adapters or some other compositional guidance, like an initial image or IP adapter. Let's do one last test just to kind of showcase that. We'll add our initial image layer. We'll move that to the back. Layer order here doesn't really impact generation, but it does impact our control layer display. I'm going to bring our uh, kind of goat and dog image in here, and I'm going to try to change this into a cat. And we'll go ahead and set our denoising strength up to 0.75. So we can see after that generation occurred, we've got our white cat here and our black dog. I'm noticing that we use the same seed, so maybe I'll do a new seed so that it looks a little less fried. As a reminder, if you use the same seed on two generations, you can get this kind of like oversaturated look. So I'll use a different seed than our initial image. And we've got our cat and our dog. We're super excited by the potential that Control Layers offers to artists and creatives and really crafting and expressing themselves inside of these emerging tools. As always, we're not stopping. We continue to make Invoke better and better with every single release. And we're excited to hear your feedback about how you're using these tools in your work. If you've got feedback or want to share a little bit more about how you're using the tools, 
feel free to reach out to the team on Discord. We're always excited and happy to hear about how we can make Invoke better and how the tool is helping artists and creatives find new ways to express themselves in the age of AI. We've got a lot more content coming. Like, subscribe, and follow to hear the latest, and we'll see you back for the next one.